Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. Hope everyone's having a good Tuesday. So I'm just gonna wait for a few people to join and then we can get started. Okay, so let's just wait for, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and get started today. Um, happy Black History Month, first things first, just wanted to say that. Um, as you all know, my name is Ibuku Amale, and I'm the social media program coordinator here at Women Walker. And today, I just wanted us to kick off Black History Month. Um, just by talking about what it means, talking about this year's theme, and just talking about how we can, you know, be active participants of um, the mission of the theme for this year. So as I always start off with, we're going to start by talking about um, what Black History Month means and, you know, just what we're going to be doing throughout this month and honestly throughout the year. So during the past few months, few months, um, Whitman Walker Health's Community Health Department has expanded its health outreach efforts to the social media platform. So you've seen us talk about various topics about HIV, STIs, um, sexual health practices. We talk about social determinants of health. We talk about access to care. We talk about the public health interventions. Um, so you definitely see us just like really trying to talk about these topics that can be really big and really kind of daunting and we try to break it down into smaller chunks through our instagram lives so like i said today is the beginning of black history month um, and throughout this month the social media team will be coming on this platform to showcase amplify highlight um, all the distinct aspects of the black experience um, so i really want you guys to look forward to learning about notable black healthcare heroes. Um, we're going to bring on some individuals living with HIV, some black individuals living with HIV. Um, we're also going to learn about just the various healthcare disparities that are affecting black women. Um, so we really hope that throughout this month, um, and honestly going forward, you are engaging with us with these different conversations and just staying active with our platform. So like I said, today I wanted to discuss why it's not only important to celebrate Black History Month in February, but also to remember to amplify these same Black voices um, throughout the year. So first, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the history of um, National Black History Month. So Black History Month actually started, um, it wouldn't have been possible without the Negro History Week's creation, which was um, founded in 1926. So it was founded in 1926 by Carter G. Woodson, and he is the founder of the, Associ of the Association um, of the study of African American life and history. And he actually was the one who started the, um, who like he founded the Negro History Week during the second week of February. So his goal was to urge the public to extend their study of black history. So since the inception of this event, um, the focus was primarily to um, encourage the teaching of history of black Americans in educational institutions, such as like, you know, schools, colleges, um, but he really was focused more on the primary level. So from the 1920s to the 1960s, um, there was a shift from, you know, there was just a week long celebration to a month long celebration. So we shifted from just the second week in February to it becoming a month long celebration in throughout the entire month of February. So actually in February, 1969, um, the idea for black history month, um, 
was promoted by Black students and educators at Kent State University. Um, so followed by the first um, celebration of Black History Month on campus and local surroundings one year later, it's become like a national event and an annual celebration. So um, in 1976, President Gerald Ford um, praised Black History Month and he urged all citizens to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. So ever since he said that, um, going forward, every American president has issued a proclamation endorsing the association's um, annual theme. So this brings us to what we're talking about today. Um, so this year's theme for National Black History Month is actually Black health and wellness. So this is really important and timely because Black individuals have continued to remain underserved by the healthcare um, healthcare institution in multiple ways. So this theme acknowledges the legacy of not only Black scholars and medical practitioners in Western medicine, but it also um, urges us to remember the other side of healthcare, which um, could be birth workers, doulas, midwives, um, naturopaths, um, herbalists um, throughout the African diaspora. So it's not just focusing on Western medicine, but also acknowledging how all types of healing um, is important to kind of attaining this um, complete black health and wellness. So we're currently in a worldwide pandemic, as we all know. Um, and this pandemic is one that has kind of highlighted um, how racism should be recognized as a public health crisis, um, which has helped bring attention to the ways African Americans have been facing healthcare disparities from the beginning. So although the current administration has tried to limit the spread of the coronavirus by distributing vaccines, um, we've been receiving at-home test kits recently, um, like mass distribution of vaccines and boosters. Um, there's also been a misinformation spread about the virus, which has set a tone of resistance um, from causing individuals to not want to be vaccinated because um, they don't trust the healthcare system. And particularly, African Americans have been vastly affected by this virus as compared to any other group of Americans. Um, black people actually are dying at a rate 1.7 times the rate of white people. And to date, we have lost over 73,000 black lives to COVID-19. And that's the number of people that have been identified as black individuals. But um, as we all know, these numbers are not 100% accurate. Um, there's probably more people um, who have lost their lives to COVID-19, but just haven't been identified. So we also know that this virus does not discriminate based on race. It doesn't discriminate based on class, gender, or age, but somehow um, it's still exposed and targeted all the disparities that come along with being a black person in America. So you might be wondering, you know, what are the different ways black people have been disproportionately affected by this virus? So one of the factors that affect this is mistrust that has kind of been prevalent in the American healthcare system from the start. So although proven effective, um, one in three black people have said that they would not receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, this mistrust should not be surprising, unfortunately. Um, from the beginning, black bodies have a long history of being mis mistreated by the healthcare system. So this is, we can go back to um, the forced sterilization of black women, um, or we could even talk about the Tuskegee um, syphilis study, which withheld treatment from hundreds of black men. So this mistrust is not something new. It's um, been um, a part of black history from the beginning and has affected um, many Black people in different ways. Another way I want to talk about is how it's also affected um, Black individuals um, through HIV. So Black men who have sex with men are the most affected groups of individuals by HIV in the U.S. So 44% of newly diagnosed HIV infections are actually um, Black individuals. And the rate of infection among black people is 7.9 times higher than the rate of infections among white people. Um, there are many factors that are causing this. Um, another one, like the same thing that I mentioned before, um, and I think it's 
I keep harping on it because I think it's really important for us to talk about and just to remember is the mistrust in healthcare system, as well as the stigma um, that is often placed on black bodies. Um, so the stigma faced by black MSM, which are men who have sex with men, um, often prevents them from returning for care. Um, also, these men are not only facing stigma based on race, but there's also an intersectional oppression that they face based on their race and their sexuality. So that's something I wanted us to think about on how people can have um, kind of intersecting oppressions that end up negatively affecting them. So attaining complete health and wellness for the black community could not be done without addressing the history of medical mistrust and how that affects not only the previous generation, but the present generation of black individuals. So for the rest of the month and honestly the rest of the year, I urge you to challenge yourself to learn about the history of black health and wellness. Um, so throughout this month, we're gonna come on the platform and we're gonna share books, we're gonna share podcasts. Um, I'm gonna share some YouTube videos, some studies that are are really um, important resources and can actually point you in the direction of learning more. Um, and we're also going to have bring different people on the platform so you can also learn from their experiences and learn from um, kind of what they've been through so it doesn't happen again in the future. Um, so I want to say thank you guys for listening today. I'm just going to end us off by saying a few tidbits about COVID-19. So if you haven't been vaccinated, um, we do offer the COVID-19 vaccine here at Whitman Walker. So you can just call us at 202-207-2480. So we do offer the vaccine as well as boosters if needed. Um, and if you would like to go somewhere else to get your vaccine, you could also go on vaccines.gov to find more information about the nearest vaccination center um, nearby you. And if you are in the DC area, there's also um, the mayor actually just rolled out a new type of facility. Um, they're called COVID centers. And at these COVID centers, you can um, receive take home rapid test. You can receive um, the take home PCR test as well. And at these centers, you can also get vaccinated and boosted. Um, so there's four in the district. Um, and you can also find information about this at vaccinate.dc.gov. Um, and that's in the comment section. So before we leave, I just want to remind you to please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, um, at Whitman Walker, as well as checking out our website at www.whitman-walker.gov. I mean, dot org. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for watching today. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>